Hello, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to demonstrate the Model 4 bender for you. What differentiates this one between our Model 3 and 32's is that on this particular bender it's designed where the die set does not rotate. It basically stays stationary and the follow bar rotates around the die. This allows you to make a little, allows you to make a little bit easier calculations on the bend. So if you're doing prototype work like guys who build tuna towers, they love it. You know, essentially, if the die doesn't rotate, you know where the bend's going to be. It's kind of hard to mess it up. Anyway, let's get on with it. Um, it's a hydraulic bender, as you can see. There is no mechanical version of it available. First thing you want to do, you're going to want to put the die in. They're all machined out of steel billet. We use our own proprietary groove profile so that basically, you know, we, we can guarantee our quality of our bends. What we're going to do now, we've got the die in. We're going to put the locking pin in place. And the locking pin is going to just prevent the, you can see the die rotating. The locking pin's purpose is just keep the die from rotating while you're bending, you know. Next, we're going to put in our follow bar. If you look at the follow bars, you'll see one side angled, one side straight. The angle has been computer calculated for the diameter of the tubing and the radius of the bend to be the optimal angle. Um, we use a special material when we do this. We cast it and machine it here. And essentially, it's a very good anti-galling, scratch-resisting um, alloy. And this is a very finely piece of machined metal, and you can tell it's not even a scratch on it. Every follow bar is labeled with the size, which side is up, and um, the whole size. These inserts are also individually replaceable, so if you happen to wear one out, which I can't remember the last time anybody did, um, they're relatively affordable. All we're going to do is, it says hole 5, so let's put it in hole 5. We'll drop that in there, and that's that. Now what we're going to do is we have a swivel block right here, a little U-block we call it. And what it does is it'll actually swivel on its pin. This allows us to place this in the middle of another bend. Um, and what that means is that, let's say you're going to build your standard cross member for a hot rod. A lot of guys, they want, to bend, they want to bend 30 degrees, and then they immediately want to go 60, back to 30, with no flat in the middle. What this does is this, since it swivels, we can actually place this in the middle of a bend that we previously bent, and we have no problem. Now what you're going to do is, through experience, I know that this thing goes in hole 5. The procedure to find out what hole it is, is simply put the tubing in it, push on the tubing, and whichever hole it fits in, it works good. A lot of times you'll find it a little bit easier, though, to put it in first and feed your tubing in. So that's what we're going to do in this particular situation right here. Here comes the tubing. All right, this bender has a feature. It's an anti-springback device, and it's designed for accurate bending, especially in thin wall tubing as its forte. As she goes around, this ratchet right here is going to engage these teeth. The object is, once we clear the tooth by the minimalist amount we can, we're going to stop the hydraulics, let it engage, and then that way now we can retract our hydraulics. What this is going to do is it's going to lock the tubing in place, prevent it from springing back. If your tubing springs back, what happens is it comes out of the groove a little bit. When you start to re-bend, generally it won't seat itself back into the groove. What it'll do is it'll try to wrinkle and hence you see wrinkle bends out there. Um, another feature of this bender is it has fixed degree uh, markings into the frame. Um, there is no adjustable pointer on it. It's a simple math deal. We did experiment with adjustable pointers. Problem is they had a habit of getting mangled and it turns out that it just wasn't the way to go. So what will happen on this bender, first thing we're going to do, before I turn on the hydraulics so you can still hear me, is we're going to run the bender out until we lose the play, until she's basically, you know, fixed. At that point, we're going to look on the right side over here and we're going to get that angle. Um, whatever that angle is, we're going to add it to the angle that we want to bend, plus a little bit for spring back. This is this is inch and a half tubing, 120 wall or so. They figure about 3-4 degrees. So let's go ahead and crank it up. We're going to engage our, our lever right here. She's spring loaded. She'll engage on her own. Um, and let's bring it on around here. I've engaged the block into its hole right here. And what I'm going to do I'm going to go until there's no play, you know. Now I'm looking here and what I'm seeing is 13 degrees. Let's say we want to go 90 degrees. We're going to go 90 plus 13, 103. Throw in 3 degrees and so for spring back we're going to 106 degrees. Let's go. Now, she's going to stroke. Here we are, we're coming up on it. So we're going to bump and there we go. We just barely engaged. At this point, I can release pressure on the hydraulics, and if you notice, the tubing's not going nowhere. We're retracting back, everything is all hunky-dory. We're going to pick up this tooth right here. Now, we went 53 right here, so I told us our first bend was 40 degrees, you know? 
So now what we're going to do, we're just going to keep on going. We're at 60, we're at 70, we're at 80. And we're going to see if we can make it all the way. We may not be able to, but let's see. Yep, there we are, 93 degrees right there. In that case, we're going to go ahead and disengage that. Now we can retract the cylinder, pull it in, bring it all the way in. There we go. Kill the hydraulics. Let's bring it on around. We'll re-engage this right here. Now, all we got to do is slide the tube in. Well, shoot, I guess I... Oh, 93 degrees, 103 degrees. There you go. Shows you the importance of good education. Um, this is your bend right here. See nice ovility on the outside. Nice bend on the inside. Um, if I'd have done it right, she'd have actually been pretty darn close to a 90. Um, but I think you get the idea. This is the basic operation of the machine. She comes in about 170 pounds, very heavy duty. Um, has a capacity up to two and a half inch, 120 wall, um, inch and a half square tubing. Um, and that's pretty much all there is to it, a Model 4.